Good afternoon. Welcome to our Thursday Live. Wherever you are in the world, and to my fellow South Africans, sit back, relax and enjoy. I am here to give some inspiration and to give you fuel for the week ahead. Maestro agrees on this and he is equally excited, as is the weather, about this life about to, that's about to happen. Um, last week I shared with you the birth of our amazing book that shares our stories, our colors and our people. Today is the 18th of November and in two days time I'll be celebrating my mother's birthday and I'll also be in the Cape um, in Stellenbosch launching our book. Um, we will be at Rosendahl um, Farm, is it Farm Guest Lodge? Farm. Rosendahl Farm in Stellenbosch. You can visit our socials to see the exact address and if you are in the area, come pop in, come get your copy and have it signed. Um, during the journey of our book, um, I, I had numerous people that assisted. Last week I introduced you to some, but there are so many faces that weren't even present in last week's life. And I'm specifically thinking of the hands holding this brush. So those are the hands of Lee. Lee is my assistant, and this is actually a metaphor, because Lee is the person that keeps things together in my life. Um, she assists me. She also runs and manages our Potch of Strum Choco store. And her hands also re resembles the hands of so many other people. Crystal DeVitt is another part of this journey. Um, and with her, without her, this book would never have been um, even possible. She, she motivated, she inspired, she took the pictures of this book. She's the person standing behind this camera. Um, so thank you. Thank you to all the faces, to all the names that I don't always mention. And then a specific fact, thank you to my mom. I'm going to read you something out of the book before we start, as it is my mom's birthday on Saturday, but I'm also going to be present, present um, in flesh with her to celebrate it with us. So I'm going to read you historians, also the color that we launched earlier this week, lovely Lorinda. So yeah, sit back, relax, it's raining outside, and I'm going to read you something out of our choco book. Look how beautiful, my mommies. Okay, so it's, it goes like this. For as long as I can remember, my mom has enjoyed painting. I always vowed I never be into painting, never mind painting and writing a book about it. My mom is able to create something amazing seemingly out of nothing. And that ability to pull things together and create something special still astounds me. She is selfless, loving, ceaselessly creative, my best friend, and a wonderful mom. My sounding board, my biggest supporter, my safe space, and my hero. And the reason, I love paint and people. And now we are going to work with the color, lovely Lorinda. When you receive your book, look out for the golden sticker. In some of the choco books, there's a hidden golden sticker with my signature on it. And if you receive your copy with that sticker inside, you email me, we will make the details available, Nadine at Choco Paint, and you will win a surprise Choco Hamper. Now let's start. We are going to inspire you today with a Christmas gift idea, as Christmas is around the corner. So we have pots, this can also be an old tin that you have in the house, it can be a new pot that you paint and chalk off someone special. So we bought these cement pots and we are going to use a choco stencil. It's Maestro, I'm so sorry, it's pouring outside, so he can't be outside. You will have to bear with him. 
I'm going to secure this stencil with some masking tape. And Crystal, you, you can maybe lure him to Yaku's room, okay? He has a lemon. This is a thunderstorm in the Cape. Ach, in the Cape, in Gauteng. Oh, my hat. Okay, so I'm securing my stencil with some masking tape. I'm going to speak up so that you can hear me. If you see comments on your screen, how to get rid of those comments, this is a frequently asked question. Just swipe your screen to the right, and then you will see those comments will disappear. So I have secured my stencil with masking tape. My pot is round. So if you want a perfect stencil effect on a round surface, use smaller stencils with less detail and very secure detail and patterns on the stencil design itself. This, this tutorial is a messy stencil technique to create an age look and feel. I'm going to use a paint scraper and then also Choco Paint Stencil of Paris. So this is the first step. I scoop some of the paste from the jar and I'm going to apply a very imperfect application of my stencil of Paris on my surface so it's not perfect. You don't want to create something perfect and even for those that like perfection, um, I'm one of those people, I will measure my curtain tape at the top to make sure everything lines up perfectly. Um, even, even if you are a person like this, this will be a technique that you will still like. So it's very imperfectly. How amazing is this weather? We boiled for the past few days. It's been, the weather has been excruciating. Um, so we're very thankful for the rain, the heavens that opened. Okay, so I am applying stencil of Paris. It's not perfectly done. I want to create texture on my surface. Thank you for the lemon maestro. And pattern here and there. Okay, so it's not perfect. You can remove the stencil, repeat the process, and where you see that there are really raised areas, just even it out for texture. Everything will make sense later, I promise. So just create texture. So you can see pattern, but you can also see texture on your surface. And now you are going to wash your stencil in water. All Choco Paints products are water-based, eco-friendly, non-toxic. So you simply wash it in water and I'm going to allow this spot to dry. There are two things that determine the drying time of paint. One is the temperature, very important. And when it comes to stencil of Paris, the thickness of application also plays a role. So the thicker the application, the longer the drying time will be. I will just be patient, it is raining outside, and I have applied this rather thick, and I will let this pot rest two to three hours. Thank you for the lemon maestro. Okay, next. I have a pot that has been stenciled already, and I left the stencil of Paris to dry. Now I'm going to work with the next choco colors. Let me show you. So I'm going to work with lovely Lorinda, a beautiful dusty nude color, soft, beautiful, just as my mom, holiday coral, David, and reddish miller. And right at the end, I'm going to see where I want to apply some antique brown glaze just to give some detail and aging in the crevices and grooves. I'm not going to work with a paintbrush for this tutorial. I'm going to work with a sponge, just a normal kitchen sponge. Okay, so what I'm going to do 
is I am going to wet it in normal water. You can to prevent contamination as tap water will definitely contaminate your paint. My paint don't get or they, it just doesn't get time to contaminate because we so frequently paint. So best for you at home will be to decant the paint in maybe something like an old plastic container or ice cream tub just to prevent contamination. Put the lids on immediately as a water and dirty paint equipment do contaminate your paint products. The first color I'm going to work with is Lovely Lorinda. So I dip my sponge in my paint. In your case, it will be decanted paint. We still have plenty of things to paint um, as we are busy preparing for a TV set. So I'm going to use up my paint quite soon and I dab. And with the other section of my sponge, I'm going to work in reddish mellow. Remember, I'm working with pinks, but you can absolutely use colors that fit your space, work with your decor style, and the decor style in your space. And I dab on top of where the two colors meet to make sure there's an even blend. So next week, we will be filming the fourth season of Do It Gewone Joe, a TV program that's airing on um, VR, DSTV channel 147. And if time allows, we will sharing the behind the scenes with you live while we're busy filming. Joe has broken his collarbone, so we are thinking of him and hoping that the, re the recovery process, process is happening soon and fast so that he can be ready for some chalk of fun in a few days. So I am just alternating between holiday coral, reddish mellow, lovely Lorinda. Our, our power just went off. I hope you can still... Okay, our power just um, went off. So I'm going to continue as far as possible. Else we will just share this afterwards. Sorry, we don't have any light to work with. Okay. I, Crystal says you can still see, so thank goodness for that. We have heavy weather at the moment. So I'm just having fun. And what actually is beautiful, and Crystal was very anxious when I said I wanted to work with Holiday's Coral, but if you have the darker pink sitting at the back, so it actually fills beautifully and flows in that crevice and detail. And then some lovely Lorinda. So this will be a gift that you can give someone with either plant in. You can fill it with some biscuits. You can fill it with stationery for the new year. And it's something that you have made yourself. Hmm? Oh, yeah, you can do it on a wall. We are going to do it. Don't tell anyone. But we are going to do it on a wall um, for the new season of Do It Gewone Joe in the space that we are busy revamping and on a furniture piece, it will be lovely. Okay, on a book, if you want to do a file or a book for someone. So I'm just simply moving between the different shades of pinks. I have difficulty to see what I'm doing. So I hope you can see what I'm doing. This is not something that we have planned. This is absolute nature but we are thankful for the rain, so we won't complain. If you want to do this with oranges, you can create a beautiful terracotta look and feel, like July, Tinas' terracotta, even Elias's epic. If you want to introduce blues, can you imagine this with Danny's day and with 
Godfrey's glimpse and Pebble's shadow. So the opportunities are endless. Okay, so once this is done, if you are going to use this outside, I would recommend the next day to apply our clear glaze to make it UV and water resistant. Follow the instructions on the lid. I am not going to. I'm actually going to fly with this spot to my mom to give it to her over the weekend. Okay, so lastly, I'm just going to ta tap some with a clean sponge. The water on the, sp on the sponge just allows the colors to blend beautifully. So very little of it. And I'm just dabbing it here and there just to bring out the texture. And just to soften it. And dab, 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 so that the colors blend nicely. <laughs> I think Maestro opened the door for himself. Crystal, leave him. He loves an orange. Okay. And then I'm going to take some sandpaper, so I'm not even allowing paint colors to dry in between, because this is very crafty it's not a perfect technique and i'm sanding to create and to emphasize the detail and the pattern on my surface that was created with a stencil technique there you can see most important enjoy the process because when this is given to someone they will feel the love and care that went into this can you imagine to fill this pot with some bath goodies nice face cloth and a bar of lovely soap okay let's quickly go over the cover colors that we used so we used reddish mellow, dove it, holiday coral. I've never worked in such a dark environment ever before. <laughs> and lovely Lorinda. Okay, those were the colors that we used. And now that there's light on my surface, I can see where I want to add more more um, contrast between different lights and blues. I'm sanding until I'm happy with the outcome and until I can see detail. When um, I look at pictures of Italy, this is something that you see especially with blues and greens in Italy. This is just very girly. Take on that. Okay, next, just to create that authentic antique look and feel I'm going to just here and there with a flat artist brush I'm using a flat artist brush I'm going to use some antique brown glaze and I'm going to stir it well on the instructions of the antique brown glaze it says add 30% water this is a very creative small item and being creative you are allowed to not follow the rules and that's something that I'm going to do now. I'm going to disobey the rules. I'm going to work with a damp microfiber cloth but you can also use a mutton cloth. This is just something I had available 
on the table and I'm going to stir first of all my antique brown glaze well. Something that the instructions also tells you is to allow for the paint to cure for at least four hours before you apply the glaze as the glazes are pure acrylic products. So if your paint hasn't cured properly, the glaze will remove paint. I am not going to be concerned if that happens on my pot because this is an old vintage look and feel I want to create. I dip my artist brush in my antique brown glaze and I am specifically going to focus on those crevices and detail, small areas at a time as the glaze dries rather quickly and I wipe away just to create some antique that authentic antique look and feel on certain areas of my pot Sorry, I just want to see what I'm doing and I'm turning the pot to me. So there's some darker shadows. And maybe here some darkness. And in on those detail, especially Very lightly, I wipe away. And the more you wipe, the more you remove, and it just sits in the detail. You can still see pink between. The empty spaces and then I'm just going to focus on this one and then I'll show you how to just soften the antique finish if you want to hide any imperfections so there's some more antiqueness damp cloth wipe away we have a question okay Is the microfiber cloth slightly damp yeah so there's a question is the microfiber cloth damp, slightly damp? Yes, it is damp, else you won't be able to remove anything. And you press as hard as you see your surface needs pressure. So the more antique glaze you want to remove, the harder you will press. Your initial pressure that you apply on the surface is soft and light until you want to remove more antique glaze. So then it's when you will press harder. Oh, this is so beautiful. I actually don't want to stop. But the most important thing is that the process makes sense. So I'll focus on this side of the pot. The main thing is the instructions, and I'm repeating myself, does say add water because the antique glaze dries so quickly, but because my surface is so small, and because I'm busy with a very creative item, I am not following any rules. I don't mind if some paint comes off. This is not a perfect um, application. This is crafty, it is antique and I think it's beautiful. Then drink that glass of wine. So we had a comment earlier um, and the, the family member said, because here everyone is family, she will first have to drink a glass of wine before she does something so imperfect. Do it. Don't drink the wine necessarily, but get out of your comfort zone. Because that is when create, true creativity gets born. When you start trusting yourself with imperfect things, nothing in life is perfect. Um, we are so often bombarded with imperfections. So, yeah, enjoy life with all its imperfections. 
Okay, so I'm done there. Now, if I want to hide anything and just soften the entire look, I'm going to use the same cloth. I'm just going to work on a cleaner section on my cloth and take some divot. I spread it on my damp cloth. So it's evenly distributed on the cloth. So there's not a blob of paint sitting anywhere and very light pressure. I apply on my surface just to hide any imperfections, give a proper contrast between light and dark and the antique finish. And this looks like a pot that was bought, not something we made in an instance. There it's done. And now I'll put my mom's plants, don't you think that looks like lovely Lorinda? In my pot, make sure the edges are perfect as well, please. And then you have something very unique and special that you made yourself. Okay, I'll put it down. My message for the week is to touch people with kindness, spreading words of kindness and acts of kindness. Um, that's something any person will remember when they have crossed paths with you. So let's be kind and creative in this week that lies ahead. I'll see some of you in Stellenbosch on Saturday. Mom, I'll see you. And until next week, stay safe, stay kind, and stay creative. Bye-bye.